Welcome to this brief tutorial on Microsoft Excel 2007. It's more or less a, a standalone tutorial, yet it is specifically a companion uh, training media for the courses I'm teaching at uh, Stark State as well as University of Akron. So if you're not a uh, Stark State student or University of Akron, you may be missing a few points that I've amplified in class. Here's the basic outcome that we're going to seek. We're going to create a home budget for a family of a male, female, and other source of income. And then some fictional expenses E1 through E11. We're going to put in the formulas and the functions, a little bit of formatting, make a few references along the way, and basically get you familiar with the very simplest basics of Microsoft Excel. Here's what we're going to discuss down on the concept sheet, which you can find available for download at my website, brianmickley.com. Okay, a little basic orientation, how to save the spreadsheet opening and closing. This is for the course uh, personnel. I encourage everyone to make a spreadsheet that is self-documenting, stands on its own two feet with no explanations. We're going to talk a little bit about formatting, how to get the appearance that you want so that you can communicate effectively what the contents and business objective of that spreadsheet is. A little bit about copying and filling. Make reference to the active cell, which is the cell that you're currently working in, and there are different ways of handling that. And then lastly, in the course, we talk about some control key combinations and other things that we won't cover today on this video. Let's begin. First thing I want to do is put my oh, uh, labels and uh, various headings so that I can begin to get a structure to the spreadsheet. We're going to enter that now. Okay, let's begin with our labels. First is the major category of income. We have his, hers, and other, and I'm hitting the enter key in between each sequence. And lastly, we want a good defined name, so we're going to put total income. I'm having a little trouble typing here. We're going to skip a space and type expenses. I'm going to just uh, speed this up by putting a fill. I'm hitting E1 and just dragging the fill down to E11. And so here I will put total expenses, and I'm going to hit enter twice and put EOM for end of month net. So there's my left hand labels, and we'll make this for half of a year. So I'm going to type Jan up here, and I'm filling in with a recognized sequence of months, and so it's going to take it out through June. You don't need to worry about that. That's a little more advanced. And here we'll put total. Okay, so now we have our left hand column and our row. We have a pretty good idea of what it is that we're building here. We'll just uh, expand this column a little bit by dragging and moving it over. And let's start with our formulas. What I really want to ask myself is what is cell B5? Well, cell B5 is his January income plus her January income plus other January income. And that is very effectively the same as saying B2, which is his January income, plus B3, which is her January income, plus B4. And so if you look at that, I think it's pretty obvious that that is, in fact, what total January income equals. And that is the language by which we tell Excel how to enter it. So at this point, I hit enter, and I get a zero. I could test that by hitting $50. And then another 50, and we see that we get 100 there. So that did the math correctly. So let's go ahead now and take our first formula, grab it, hold it with our left mouse button, and drag it all the way over here so it's always going to be totaling this group of cells above the active cell that has the formula. We want another formula down here, but this time I'm going to introduce you to a new concept, and the concept is a function 
and the name of the function is sum. Every function has a name, opens with a parenthesis, and then takes one or more arguments separated by commas, and you can see that this meets that criteria here. I'm going to give it the argument of a range, which is the range B8, B8 through B18. Close the parenthesis, verify that that is in fact what you want totaled, and it is. So we hit enter. Lastly, my end of month net is going to be the difference between the total income minus the total expenses, and we hit enter there to commit it. Okay, so there we have the basic formulas that we need to make a meaningful set of computations in January. We can make them for the whole first half by copying them over to the right through column H, and we would do the same thing with the end of month net. So notice that if I double click on this, all the way out in column H, I have the same relative formula of H5 minus H19, or total income for the half minus total expenses for the half. So we only need to come up here in the totals for his, her, and others, and see if we can total the row across. Well, we're going to use the easier way of getting it, which is the function, rather than putting B2 plus C2 plus D2 plus E2. That's not very efficient. So we're just going to enter our function, SUM. Every function has a name, followed by a parenthesis, and we're going to put the range B2 colon or through G2. That is the range we're looking for. We close our parentheses and hit enter. Now we're just going to drag that down. We're going to repeat the same process here. Equals H8. Excuse me, equals B8 some B8 colon H8 or through H8 and looks like we want that through G8 I got a circular reference there we don't want to add ourselves into ourselves and so now we copy that down and that basically is the completed set of formulas and functions that make up the basic initial spreadsheet. Let's do a little verification here since we still have a few more minutes. Put a thousand dollars in for his income, thousand dollars for her income, and five hundred dollars for other income, and we can see that it adds the column January correctly, twenty-five hundred dollars, and so far since there are no expenses, a twenty-five hundred dollar end of month net is a correct number. Let's give them some expenses. We'll say they had a $1,000 mortgage payment and a $500 car payment. And so they have $1,500 of total expenses, $2,500 of income, minus $1,500 of expenses, leaves them with an end of month net of $1,000. And so that calculation is working. Now, we want to verify across the row. $1,000 is the only entry, so we're not doing too much in the line of verification there yet. We'd want to add another one to make sure that it is working correctly. So there's $2,000. And if 2,000 plus 1 plus 5 is 3,500, which it is, then we know since we copied that down, our math is working correctly. They're all identical. We're going to do the same thing here. $1,000 in April gives them a $2,000 total E1 expense, plus $500 is a $2,500 total expense. So they have currently showing $3,500 for the year minus $2,500 of expense, leaves them $1,000 left over.